Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode of Smack Talk. This is now episode number 6. This is the podcast that's not a podcast. It technically is a podcast now, we've all distinguished. Uh, that's hosted by me, Sean McLeavy, aka Smack. Smack Talk. Okay, so what's new this week? Uh, basically, as you can hopefully notice, I have my new MacBook. It's here. And... So I got it on Thursday, I was waiting all day for it to arrive, was so excited, could not wait. Finally it's here. So what does this mean? It means that I can sit down and do smack talk. I threw up a thing on Instagram during the week saying like send me in stuff that you want me to react to. I can have it all here ready to go. So I have a few of them prepared for later on in the episode. What it means now as well is if there's anyone shouting or screaming in my house, I'll be able to muffle it down and get rid of it and chop it out and stuff. Whereas I couldn't really do that before. I don't know if you've seen my Instagram. Anyone that follows me on Instagram probably seen it. Mum started making noise during one of these episodes last week and just, I just hit the roof. Because I, as I was saying, I used to only have one take to this. Now I can chop it, change it, add things in, take things out. I'm also going to be adding in a new outro that I'm really excited about. Music made by a friend of mine, Gabriel John, which will be linked down below. Really excited to get that out. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, just be able to vlog and record more stuff and upload more content basically and hopefully it's a bit better for everybody so really excited really really excited about this what has been going on in my week this week Gee, like this is definitely without doubt been the busiest week i've had uh next week i have a job interview on monday i have a test on wednesday and another test on friday and anyone that knows me would say well john why sit doing youtube videos and silly stuff you should be studying I don't do stress. I don't. I failed so many exams in the past that I don't care anymore. I just know you either do the work or you don't do the work for these exams and you should give yourself enough time to do them. So I feel like I've given myself enough time. I'm not one of the people that's going to go into melting mode, killing people, stress people, lock my room in for 12 hours a day. I do. I think yesterday was the heaviest day I did of studying. I probably did about four or five hours and trust me, there was lots and lots of breaks in between there as well. So yeah. Advice I could give to other people as well, like just don't, these exams are not worth stressing about, they really aren't. Like, my degree personally I feel is something that's going to be a fallback for me. I'm pursuing other things, things I'm more passionate about, but if things go bad I can fall back on my degree and use that as a career. Which, I don't know if that's really cocky to say or not, but here, it is what it is. got to believe in yourself and you got to have a wee bit of faith and drive. And without that then, you're not going to go far, I suppose. <laughs> that brings me on to the first topic, actually, someone sent me in this week. Uh, a friend of mine, JackMick1997, on Instagram, he basically asked me... Let me see here. He asked me... Oh, yeah. So he asked me, uh, do I think universities have stepped up enough to them to a topic we should cover? And without doubt, in my personal opinion, the universities have not done enough. And that wasn't good enough for me, so what I did was I threw out another Instagram poll if you're not following me on Instagram, that's where everything happens. Sean McAlevey13, by the way. And I threw it to be poll and said, do you think university has sent, stepped up enough during this time to help students? And the response was, I think, 92% said they hadn't stepped up enough. And the other people said they had stepped up enough. I don't know. So what then happened was, I got people to send me personal stories that have happened then. Because personally for me, I said to the university, I said, I don't have a laptop that's good enough to the standard I like to use. I go to the library to use the computers and that's where I do all my work, which is kind of fair enough. And they get back to me and said, uh, all the laptops are pretty much given out. The woman that's head of my course was very good. She said she was personally going to go and find me a laptop, but that's kind of not the point. The point is, why did the university not have something set up to where they could give laptops to students who needed them? Like, obviously now I'm fine. I went and bought, I went and bought an £800 laptop, but you know what I mean? If I was forced to have done that and wasn't using it for this sort of purpose for the YouTube and stuff, it wouldn't be completely pointless. It would have been ridiculous to have spent that amount of money or even say two hundred, three hundred pounds on a laptop just because their contingency plan from people that are meant to be very, very smart didn't actually factor this in or pretend it wasn't an issue because there's no way you can say that's not an issue. But an even better story than that that someone reached out and sent me was I'll not mention the person's name, but they sent me they they sent me a story and basically what happened was their they had an assignment due in three weeks time and basically the university closed down the week that their assignment was handed out so this is the assignment you have to do. The lecturer who was in charge of that went off on holidays for three weeks just as the university closed so she wasn't responding to any emails or any contact and within that three week period the assignment was due again so any of the students that wanted help or wanted any information literally couldn't get anything. Like, <laughs> I, I, There's no point in me even trying to make that funny because what on earth like that is absolutely insane 
three weeks of nothing. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, university fees for Northern Ireland students to go to Northern Ireland University, it's £4,000 a year. So the fact that you're paying that amount of money for something and you're not getting anything in return a lecture to go away for three weeks is just absolutely scandalous. I also know friends as well, I'm not going to harp on about this too much, but I also know friends that have been saying they had a master course, they've been doing, they've had to pay the money themselves, which is, a, I don't know, like seven grand for a master's course or something, and basically what they've been telling me is that they're just, they want their money back. Like, they had strikes that they lost out in three weeks of classes for, and then uh, they did like a week classes, and then the, like, the university had to shut down. Like, some sort of, if this, if you were doing like a boot camp, like a gym boot camp, I know university and gym boot camp is a bit different, but if I had paid up front for a gym boot camp, say it was, Two hundred pound, and it was over twelve weeks, and they cancelled them after three weeks because of coronavirus. You would expect to get that money back, even if they're doing online videos. You'd still expect to be able to take your money back and be like, "Hang on a second, this is ridiculous." But yeah, enough of that. Anyway, uh, the other topic I was sent in was from the music at the end, Gabriel, uh, Gabriel John on thing on Instagram, and he's basically asked me, "Do I think coronavirus is a conspiracy or is it all one hundred percent facts?" And if you believe that anything, all the information we're getting is one hundred percent facts, I don't know, like. There's no way. China's saying one thing, America's saying another thing. Like, just take a look, pull back for a wee second and actually look at the world leaders for a minute. You have Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, uh, the dictator guy in China, I don't know his name, and who's the other one? Kim Jong-un, who we still actually don't know if he's dead or alive. But that's not the point. Like, this time in, is going to go down history and they are world leaders. Probably the only good ones and good guys I suppose out of this is all probably Angela Merkel from Germany who seems to do a decent job and I think it's the woman from New Zealand like they've they completely cracked all this down like two and then the rest it's you couldn't put together a group of super villain, villains like the current world leaders <laughs> they're literally like they're like a group that would try to steal the moon or something I have no idea like just how is this real what's happening how are these people making the big decisions it's honestly mental also, if you believe 5G is causing coronavirus, I don't know. Just, maybe it's killing fish and stuff, but it's definitely not what caused coronavirus. My personal opinion that I think is most accurate is China created in a lab, it leaked out to control their population and spread beyond their control, and now look what's happened. And that, and there's other conspiracies out there too, but I think that is probably the most likely one that I found. Quick shout out quickly to Adele who's lost all the weight. Loads of people online giving her hate and if you're giving Adele hate for losing weight, what are you doing? The woman has lost weight. People are saying oh but she's more people are saying she's more attractive. She just it is. It's more attractive to be that size. I'm sorry if I offended anyone in that category. There's nothing wrong with being big and some people do find that beautiful and it is beautiful. But she's lost all the weight, she's done well, and the key point of all this is she's healthier. No matter what you say about any of this, the facts are the size she was part of the size now she was healthier and you should congratulate her on that and how well she's done and how that should inspire other people instead of giving her hate about how she's given a negative body image to people that are of a larger size like just <sighs> moan and groan i am do not want to turn this into a negative negative podcast and sort of sit down talk so i'm going to finish on this which is a bit some good news and something that you should all definitely check out so came across Loads of people sharing that they're starting YouTube channels and starting up uh, like their own passions and things they got through this quarantine lockdown, which is absolutely brilliant. But one person you all need to check out is Emma Fagan, 13 on Instagram, or I think her YouTube name is Emma Lou Fagan on YouTube. She sings, she's local from where my area from, and honestly, blown away by her voice. Absolutely amazing. So I thought as well, I'd give a quick shout out to her as well. Go over and check her channel out. Like, it's mental to me that people that are so talented like that have been so shy and putting their voice out there like people with gifts deserve to share them so huge shout out to her and well done to her as well go and check her out so that's basically going to do it guys i fitted as many topics as i could in there as possible keep sending in your suggestions for more uh comments and things to talk about i really enjoy reacting to stuff that you send me even videos or whatever it is but for now guys this is going to do it thank you so so much for watching smack talk i'll see you all again saturday same place same time Peace out.